the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. You know, despite all of its issues, I've always really enjoyed Destiny. The first game always had problems with how loot works, but I dealt with it anyway. It had a terrible sense of storytelling and world building, but it did so many neat narrative things with its atmosphere and environments that I forgave it. And Bungie was always so attentive and willing to fix what was wrong that I could never stay mad at the game for long. But there was one thing that really bugged me about the first game that I never quite got over. I was really hoping they would fix it in Destiny 2, like they fixed basically everything else from the first game, but they actually somehow made it worse. So today, we're talking about power fantasies, cooperative play, and ludonarrative dissonance. Okay, I know some people probably just clicked out of the video the moment I uttered those words because they're very divisive for some reason, but stick with me, it's gonna make sense. For those unaware, ludonarrative dissonance is a concept in video game design theory and criticism theory. It describes a phenomenon where any game's mechanical elements and its narrative elements are at odds with each other. So for a really simple example, say there was a first-person shooter and you spent the whole game shooting dudes, but the story of the game was about peaceful protest, and all the cutscenes talked about the importance of pacifism and even thanked you for contributing to that cause, while well, the gameplay was still all about murdering dudes. The story is saying one thing, the gameplay is saying another. But in reality, it rarely comes out quite that straightforward and obvious. It's usually a good deal more subtle and kind of hidden beneath the surface of what we normally experience as we're playing a game. So it can be difficult to notice and even more difficult to talk about, which is why it's become kind of a controversial subject in the last couple years. So when I talk about ludonarrative dissonance in Destiny 2, it may not be initially clear what I'm talking about. Like most shooters, the gameplay has an implicit message about the use of violence to resolve conflict, and the story goes along with that just fine. It's a story about protecting humanity and the Traveler from aliens, and it's a game about shooting aliens that are trying to harm humanity and the Traveler. On the surface, it all checks out pretty well. But if we dig a little deeper, there is an inconsistency that's bugged me since the first game. Destiny isn't just a first-person shooter, it's a massively multiplayer online first-person shooter. Nearly everything in the game was designed to be done with multiple people, and some of the high-level play literally can't be done alone. So if we're looking at what Destiny's gameplay says, it's all about cooperation. It's about banding together with others to accomplish great things. Even the competitive Crucible mode is justified in-game as a test of strength to improve oneself through friendly competition with teammates. Basically, everything about Destiny is about working together. Except, weirdly enough, the story. Throughout the first game, even if you're playing through the story with friends, your guardian is the only one who shows up in cutscenes. Your Guardian is the only one the Vanguard talk to or even talk about. Destiny may be about cooperative play, but the story is unquestionably about you, the super cool, ultra-powerful Guardian who single-handedly saves the world. Those two things don't mix super well. I was hoping that Destiny 2 would fix this. It really shouldn't be too hard to shift the focus from the heroism of a single Guardian to the collective effort of an army of Guardians protecting humanity and the Traveler from a Cabal invasion. But instead, they actually doubled down on it. In Destiny 2, the Traveler is contained by the Cabal and all Guardians lose their connection to the Light. Your powers, your immortality, all gone. But you get it back pretty quick. You, specifically. You alone, and no one else. So not only is the story, again, at complete odds with the gameplay's message of cooperation, it's not even consistent with the story itself at this point. At least it made sense in the first game when other Guardians could accompany you on missions. Now it doesn't at all, but even weirder, the Crucible is a thing again as soon as you get your light back, even though you're, theoretically, the only one at this point in the story who's still immortal. No one else should be able to take part in deadly competition like this anymore. Suddenly the game's hard work to make all its disparate elements work in harmony with the setting and the story are all gone to waste. So why? Why make a game about cooperative effort and make the story about one lone hero? The most likely answer is, unfortunately, also the most common and least interesting. Power fantasies are what these games do. Not always, not inherently, but most of the time. It's kind of their default mode. Bungie has personal experience with this, of course, since the Halo trilogy is all about the last surviving super soldier and humanity's only hope, but shooters as a genre tend to magnify the already super common tendency for video games to build themselves around making you feel awesome. And it's certainly the easiest thing to build a video game story around. 
But Destiny should be different, because it's never been about accomplishing anything alone. It's never been about the power of the individual. The entire game is designed around elevating the idea of teamwork and cooperation and working together to make life better for everyone. But the power fantasy demands that the player be special, that they be uniquely and solely capable of defeating evil, and that, ultimately, is what took priority. But by giving in to the tendency to prioritize power fantasy in video game narratives, Destiny 2 ends up devaluing its cooperative ideals just for the sake of an easy way to make the player feel good about themselves. How awesome would it have been to have a game that was actually about being one part of a larger effort, that used its multiplayer elements to really put us into one part of a huge battle for the fate of the world, to make us feel less like the single-handed savior of humanity and more like one small but important part of a struggle that we need others' help to overcome? That's what Destiny could have been. I'd argue that's what it should have been. But as fun as it is, and as great as Destiny 2 is, it still hasn't distinguished itself in this way, and I think both the game and its audience are lesser for it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments. There are links in the description to Games of Lit 101 on Facebook and Twitter, and if you like the show enough to consider helping me put more time and effort into it, then please do check out that Patreon link in the description as well. So thank you once again for watching, and until next time, Class dismissed.